like you, or maybe like you, <laughs> I'm presuming too much, big fan of cinema, and I have a movie room, and it's been one of my hobbies to not only collect cinema, but also to collect props and replicas, and I'd like to show you five props and replicas, or replicas, that I think revolutionized cinematic history uh, to qualify for this I'm picking uh, replicas that I think did such a great job just on their own that they actually stole the show and eclipsed the actors in the films my first one this is Hopefully y'all can guess this. This is from my favorite musical. One of my favorite films as well. This is The Razors from Sweeney Todd. I actually have a couple of these movies here. This is the exclusive Steelbook edition believe this is a European resale but you can see right there uh, Sweeney Todd is a movie about a barber who uh, moves back to London in order to take revenge uh, he meets a woman who has a failing pie shop and he shaves people and whenever he's done shaving them he or before he will take his razor and cut their throat she will then make them into pies and um, it's very disturbing <laughs> very disturbing but there's something that's so cool about this um, this replica it it truly embodies something that's so disturbing. It, it's such a creepy weapon in that this is a functional tool that people use to shave. And what's so creepy about it, I think, is people would basically fall in, volunteer to be murdered. You know, they didn't know they were going to get murdered, but they would sit there, you know, unassumingly, and get murdered uh, so I think that this is one of the coolest pieces of cinema and it's the smallest one I have to show you and I think if it wasn't such a good musical I think this would have a little bit more attention as one of the greatest props in all film and all stage now the second replica that I have to show you is based loosely on a historical event and I want to see if you can guess it again so can you guess this this is a claymore from the movie Braveheart. Uh, as you can see, this is not a full-sized Claymore. This right here is probably a very similar uh, size that the actual sword was. There is a notion that the actual sword of William Wallace is seven feet tall um, and that is the sword that is in the museum uh, they didn't use those swords back then and, and I'm not here to say one way or the other but um, this is probably historians believe more accurate to what he had this is called a sword and a half so you have one hand and then you would have basically half your hand to control. Um, 
this up here is a function for actually grabbing as well. Now, the reason why this particular piece is in this video is because this piece right here designed for the movie is what people think about when they think about a claymore. This is not what a claymore looks like, but because of that film, people think that this is the sword of William Wallace, and historically speaking, it just isn't. <laughs> um, it's not super historically accurate, um, but it's it's just it's so cool to see how cinema can actually dictate people's opinions of of what history was. So this is probably more accurate. Uh, the man was 6'5", supposedly, but um, whenever you have a six-foot sword, it becomes so flexible. It, it's entirely impractical. So I don't want to tell everyone out there that that sword um, in the museum is, is not his sword, but um, a beautiful, beautiful piece, nonetheless. Now, speaking of movies, I'm still on movies and still on weapons. Um, I don't know if it's just because historical films are, are sort of something that, that I really adore, or if it's just in general, just something about weapons, I think, cements their place in history. And I have another one here. See if you all can guess this. This is a a full fledged replica, a totally functional sword, um, full handle, full everything of a sword from the movie Three Hundred. Leonidas and I'm kicking myself because I have so many editions of this film I could have shown you but I didn't get it in time and the children are sleeping <laughs> so I don't want to wake him up for this but um, this sword is famous you know as soon as you look at the 300 cover of Leonidas doing this I mean you want to talk about a, a piece of cinema that transcends all these actors. Um, Gerard Butler, incredible, incredible job. But this sword, it just means so much. Um, this is actually very accurate to what they would call a falcata. And based on a real design, based on a real sword, looks very, very similar with the exception that this handle is freaking huge. Um, this is actually big enough for me to have both hands. This should be around here to where I can't slide all the way down, which is what would happen. But a very historically accurate weapon see that definitely one of my favorite films growing up and um, I think it'll live forever honestly I think it's one of the best so this next one is actually the first um, replica that ever I, I ever bought and honestly, it's probably the coolest. Um, another movie that probably all of you know, and I think single-handedly the coolest weapon used by the coolest villain in any fantasy movie. And I'll see if you recognize this. This 
is the Urukai sword from Lord of the Rings. This is a beast. This is a actual um, reproduction. This is a six pound uh, Damascus Urukai sword. It has this insane spike on it, which I usually have covered because I mean, it could impale you really easy. Uh, has this really crude sort of suede leather wrapping and a really crude wooden handle. Very difficult to hold. Very difficult to swing. This, of course, is the sword that was used by all the Uruks. Fellowship of the Ring and the Two Towers. This is um, funny enough. This is actually um, a a based not on real tools. You'd have this this sort of hook that you could use as a multi tool. You know, take it, put it in the ground. You could you could sow and, and harvest and all kinds of stuff with with sort of tools like this. But one of the coolest pieces in my collection. Very difficult to find these. Um, but they made so many of them for the films and um, and around that time. So super, super cool. And I do have the movie right here. And of course, the only film that I had in Blu-ray Return of the King, which coincidentally is literally the only film in The Lord of the Rings that doesn't have a guy, which I think is a major plot hole, um, one of the many by Peter Jackson, but the idea that we made all these Urukai and then we sent them to Helm's Deep and then they all died and now we can't make any, it doesn't can't make any more, it doesn't make any sense. So, wonderful films though, and although Peter Jackson, there are some big plot holes there, I think he did a great job. So, this is the Urukai Saber. Yeah. We are now down to the final one, which arguably is my favorite. Um, I think some of the other ones are probably cooler, but obviously you would be more of a fan of a particular prop if you were a fan of the show. And this is a television show. It's the first, first time that I've jumped to TV and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you the actual Blu-ray, and then you can guess what it's gonna be. So, this is the Blu-ray, The Walking Dead, and this is the complete 10th season, and um, never opened. And it says on here, a fiery, fiery new beginning. are grudgingly respecting the new borders. So, based on that, what do you think is the coolest weapon in The Walking Dead? I'll give you a second. You can pause it. <laughs> Go down in the comments, let me know. Honestly, there were so many cool ones. Rick had his, uh, had his cold python. Michonne had her samurai sword, and uh, Daryl had his raging bull, but that's not the one that I think is the coolest. The one that I think is the coolest. Uh, let me make sure I don't skewer myself. Right here, I 
if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, you'll recognize this as none other than Lucille. And quite fitting on the 10th season, that's when you hear about the backstory of Lucille, but this is the weapon of Negan, who is perhaps one of the greatest villains of all TV history. Lucille's very simple. You grab some paint and put an O around her. Next, you grab some barbed wire, staple it down here, run it up to the top, staple it up top, and you got Lucille. This is real barbed wire, and this is a real Louisville slugger. Very, very good weapon, if ever you were to need one. What made Lucille so interesting, I think, is literally treated Lucille like a person. Because, as you find out later, Lucille was a person. But, I mean, this is, I don't want to put in any, like, spoiler, so I'm not going to tell you who Lucille killed. But, everyone's favorite Walking Dead character, um, Lucille killed everyone's favorite Walking Dead character, Lucille was that thing that that drove Negan crazy when he lost it. Lucille is just, it is a weapon, but also a character. And I think one of the coolest props of any film or television show, I think Lucille uh, would fit that. And uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan did an incredible job as well. I think Lucille is probably my favorite character in The Walking Dead. Uh, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and drop a comment down below. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.